from Central Iowa's award-winning news station. This is 5 TV's Iowa News Today. Good evening, I'm Betty Cross. And I'm George Wiley, and we're live on the road today at Southridge Mall. We really enjoy getting out on the road because it gives us a chance to meet all of you and to kind of get out of the studio right. and mingle just a little bit. It kind of breaks up the monotony. It also gives you a chance to peek behind the scenes of a television newscast and see the way things really work. Now, we're going to be going on the road every month or so, so we hope if you couldn't come out today, you'll come out another day, maybe next month. We sure do. Well, after nearly 10 years, Des Moines water is back on its way to being safer for you to drink. Testing began today on equipment that will remove a suspected cancer-causing chemical from the underground water. Steve Carlin has our story. Installation is nearly complete on a system for removing trichloroethylene, or TCE, from groundwater east of the Des Moines Waterworks. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency ordered DICO to do the cleanup because TCE-laced water is drawn into the waterworks from company land. Waterworks officials say DICO has been very cooperative and they feel this is the best system available. We will be the watchdog uh, of that system. We think that's very important since we are the ones that it has a direct impact on. And we should be the one that is monitoring to make sure that it's working correctly. McMullen says seven wells will pump contaminated water out of the ground and into the tower, where large quantities of air will strip the chemical from the water. The tower is designed to remove 96% of the TCE from the water, which will be discharged into the Raccoon River. Because of the TCE threat, the waterworks has been forced to use water from the Des Moines and Raccoon Rivers. But with the tower in place, officials hope to start using the gallery's pure water again around the first of the year. We will continue to monitor it. The intent is that uh, the system will continue to run until the contamination reaches drinking water standards. Des Moines Water Works officials say this tower will be tested and adjusted this week and will go into full operation next week. Steve Carlin, 5 TV News. There may be new hope tonight for Des Moines Armstrong plant, which is scheduled to shut down January 10th. Des Moines Union President Earl Seymour says workers in Hanford, California may decide Sunday whether to vote again on a package of wage and benefit concessions for the Des Moines plant. The California plant voted no last month, and Armstrong officials say Des Moines plant will close unless California workers change their minds. A Des Moines lawmaker said today that he has plans to introduce legislation next month that would allow you to play the ponies without even having to go to the track. As Jeff Nowakowski reports, some say it's a sure bet. The world's most watched sport, horse racing, may be seen on closed circuit television in Iowa. A Des Moines lawmaker plans to introduce legislation in January that would legalize off-track wagering. Off-track betting would allow people to watch races on television, known as simulcasting, and place bets. It's been estimated that off-track betting could increase revenue at Iowa's tracks by as much as 30 percent. So I think it would enhance the Altoona racetrack uh, by bringing the uh, thoroughbred racing to all parts of the state, I believe would help their handle. And they're going to need that here in Polk County to retire those bonds. And so I think any effort made along this, this line will be good, and not only for Altoona, but I think it will be good for the whole state. Members of the Racing Association of Central Iowa, which is building the taxpayer-backed $50 million horse track north of Des Moines, say they can't comment on the proposal. Without it, you're not going to have successful racing. One man who follows racing throughout the United States says simulcasting will guarantee the success of an uncertain Altoona track. But the salvation of horse racing in the future is in the clubhouse extension to the major hotels in the state where the racetrack is licensed. Those who favor simulcasting or off-track betting say it's a good bet. You'll see some form of it in Iowa in the next year or so. Reporting from Altoona, Jeff Nowakowski, 5 TV News. Today, Marshall County Sheriff Bud Gonzalez submitted his resignation effective January 1st. Gonzalez says he's leaving because of personal differences and frustration in the management of the Sheriff's Department. Three former employees had accused the Sheriff's Department of discrimination. Today, those claims were settled out of court with the county. Gonzalez has been Marshall County Sheriff for 19 years. Coming up, politics certainly isn't child's play. And our kids could be the winners or the losers in the political game. We'll have the complete story coming up next. Listen to the heartbeat. 
There's a lot riding on the road today. A lot of hard-working machines, both on and off the road. A lot of smart choices, a lot of solid choices. But there's more riding out there than this. At Crescent Chevrolet, our reputation is riding on every vehicle we sell. Over 50 years as a downtown auto dealer. Our reputation for service and fair deals. Crescent Chevrolet. Last minute shoppers, here's good news. Menard still has a super selection of toys on sale now at 30% off. Names like Mattel, Tonka, Hasbro, and more. Every toy in stock is now 30% off. And save on Panasonic rechargeable batteries. Choose C, D, AA, AAA, or 9-volt rechargeable batteries. Now just $3.99 per pack. Hurry in for Menard's Christmas sale. Boy, it's Jesus, greetings to you all from Menard's. When you're sleeping on the wrong mattress, well, your day can really start out on the wrong foot. That's why you should drive to Newton Furniture on the east end of Newton. We'll save you big bucks on firm, extra firm, and luxury firm bedding. You can even save up to 50% on Sealy's famous Posturepedic. So experience our best Sealy sale at Newton Furniture. It's that time again on Family Ties. Pledge week begins. <laughs> and we're happy to be part of WKS Family. Stevens got his hands full organizing the talent. We want to do a sound check on the boss's wife. Alex, of course, is into fundraising. Well, I feel terrible, Judy. Lost all your money on the first hand. But it's Elise who steals the show. I think I'm going into labor. <laughs> labor. Next time on Family Ties. Family Ties, Thursday at 6.30 on 5 TV. You're watching 5 TV's Iowa News Today. Do you know your favorite presidential candidate's views on children's issues? If not, you're being encouraged to ask them. The Child Welfare League of America has started the Children's Presidential Campaign, and that campaign has now moved into Des Moines. Beverly Fisher has the story. Organizers of the Children's Presidential Campaign say all children are entitled to five basic supports. Okay, adequate health care, housing, nutrition, income security, and quality child care. The campaign is designed to get people out to talk to the candidates and make them answer questions about care for children. In simple words, say to every candidate, we want a plank in your platform for children. We want a children's initiative. We want every candidate running for president to have a major children's initiative. Lederman pointed out that in a recently televised presidential debate where all the candidates were present, not once were children's issues even brought up. The whole issue of domestic concerns typically take a, a lower priority, I believe. And this is, a, this is an attempt to get grassroots involvement in pushing this up to the top a little more. Lederman says children can be a priority and that the money is there for increases in aid for dependent children. It just has to be appropriated. All of the bills that are being uh, discussed in Washington, none of them have an increase in the grant. Not one of them. Backers of the children's presidential campaign say as long as children need help, the government must do its share. And I know being a single parent, how hard it was for me to raise my kids alone, you know. And if it had not from the little help from daycare and ADC and stuff, I couldn't have it done. Beverly Fisher, 5 TV News. The presidential candidates may have to answer to the other end of the spectrum as well. The American Association of Retired Persons is following through on a promise, that is, for members to get their peers to the polls. They're making calls urging people to discuss issues involving the elderly. They're also trying to make sure seniors get out and vote. Organizer Meg McKnight says Iowa's older population is indeed a force to be reckoned with. The AARP hopes to reach 150,000 people during this current phone blitz. It plans to begin another in January. It will operate until the caucuses in February. Now, even though we're on the road today, no one else may want to be on the road tomorrow. We have some freezing rain coming in, don't we? We'll make it a little bit slippery tomorrow morning. I'll tell you about it when we come back. Join me, George Wiley, for Made in Iowa and tour one of the state's high-tech industries. Segment 5 is seen exclusively on 5TV's Iowa News Tonight.
shop I be. Delicious holiday desserts look and taste even better with topping. And this week, Hy-Vee Whip Topping is specially priced at just 39 cents. And while you're there, pick up Hy-Vee Fruit Cocktail, just 66 cents. Imperial Stick Margarine, 29 cents. And Idaho Russet Potatoes, 10 pounds, just 99 cents. Savings to match your holiday spirit at Hy-Vee. Where there's a helpful smile in every eye. Dip into the holiday spirit with something new. McDonald's Holiday Chicken McNuggets in festive 9 and 20 piece packs and two new sauces. Tangy cranberry with a twist of orange and sweet apple spiced with cinnamon. Better chime in before holiday McNuggets are gone. Now get a 9 piece Chicken McNugget Holiday Pack with a large Coca-Cola and a large order of fries for only $2.99 plus tax. You know, for years, old Buck's been the best weed killer in the county. Go get him, Buck. <laughs> best little weeding dog around. But now we get even better results with Buck Control. Good broadleaf control, excellent crop safety, and a wide window of application. So what's Buck doing now that Buck Control's the best weed killer around? He still got chores. When it comes to controlling broadleaf weeds in corn, nothing measures up to Buck Drill. On MASH, the big gel puts the unit on ice. We'll all be a lot warmer if we press our bodies together. So let's line up here. Girl, boy, girl, <laughs> and the rest of you are on your own. Only Charles is comfortable. How can you wear that big, thick suit in front of all these frostbite patients? A little bulk him, and I think I can manage. While Klinger gets the injury that could get him sent home, but he doesn't know it. On the next MASH. MASH, Thursday at 6 on 5 TV. 5TV's Don Novak has received the American Meteorological Society's seal of approval for television weather casting. And Don Novak's joining us now, and he's going to give us the name of another snow thrower winner. That's right. Uh, winner number five it goes to Evelyn Roberts from Audubon. She wins a Toro CCR 2000 snowblower, guessing December 14th as the date of the first snowfall in Des Moines. And that's when it was, by golly. So congratulations going out to uh, Mrs. Roberts. Now, if, uh, we've been giving key demonstrations as we've been on the road. Scotty, if you can beam me down, please. There we go. And suddenly I appear because, you see, the graphic's not back here. All we have is a blue screen. So the director can uh, take me and put me in here and take me out if he wants to. And to prove that, if I hold up this blue card, you see, you can see the hole right through me. If I turn it over, we have a gray card. You, can't, you can see the card now. But again, as I turn it back to the blue side, everything that's the color of our key disappears and the graphic shows up in back of it. That's how it works. Now, we could probably want to make our low temperatures this morning disappear. Wouldn't going to be that easy, though. One degree above zero was the low temperature this morning up at Waterloo. Also one degree at Mason City for a morning low. Chilly throughout the state, though. The warmer spots, well, 11 down Lamoni. We also had a 14-degree reading over at Sioux City. 17 degrees in Atlantic. Those were the warm temperatures. Three above zero in Ames, two above in Osceola. And officially, we had a reading of... Uh, four above in the Des Moines area this morning. As far as region lows, look like this. Some sub-zero readings up to our north. Five below zero at uh, International Falls was the low temperature in the nation. Single digits all the way down to Kansas where that snow cover is heavy. That's where it was warm, where the snow cover was lighter or no snow cover at all. Temperatures held into the teens. As far as the uh, current readings outdoors right now, partly cloudy skies. 25 in Des Moines, fair and 22 in Ames. The wind chill temperature right at zero. We have a dew point temperature of 17, south winds 14 miles per hour. Those are going to continue to increase tonight. Falling barometer 30.28 inches of mercury. National radar summary is showing still some snow shower activity off in the, the uh, uh, snow belts around the Great Lakes region and up into Maine. We're also showing some thunder showers starting to break out in Texas. Some snow is starting to develop now off to the west. Snows and rains continuing down the southwest at our surface features. We can see that storm system still off the coast there. Starting to weaken just a little bit. Winds haven't been so strong, but heavy snow is continuing in that area. This frontal system is going to be working its way on through Iowa tomorrow afternoon. In the meantime, some strong winds aloft out of the southwest are going to bring some moisture in, and that's going to spell some freezing rain problems. As far as our almanac today, no precipitation around. The morning low was 4. The afternoon high was rather pleasant at 28. Sun up tomorrow morning will be at 736. For tomorrow, if you're going to be heading out early, watch out, because the roads could be slippery. We're going to have some freezing rain. Moving into Iowa overnight, probably starting around 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Continuing through the morning hours, snow to the north, 
rain to the south. By late afternoon, that freezing rain area is going to shift off to the east. Problems should end. We may still have some flurries, a little bit of sunshine in the afternoon, but a lot of clouds still around. Freezing rain, though, just off to our south, snow moving to the northeast. The details of my forecast look like this. For tonight, becoming cloudy with freezing rain or freezing drizzle developing toward morning. Low temperature will be 22 degrees, southeast winds increasing to 15 to 25 miles per hour. Tomorrow we'll see the freezing rain and drizzle during the morning hours, becoming partly sunny during the uh, afternoon. High temperature above 32 degrees, so the temperature should, or the ice should start to melt off a little bit. Then tomorrow night, variably cloudy, a low temperature dropping off to 25, a bit mild. And on sun, uh, or Saturday, increasing clouds, chances of some rain or snow developing though during the afternoon hours. So some unsettled weather, doesn't look like anything real bad as far as heavy precipitation, but watch out for that icy areas tomorrow morning. Nothing as bad as what we had the earlier part of the week. This will probably be worse to travel on tomorrow morning, but uh, not as much as the way of precipitation itself. Yeah, well, okay. Santa was over there listening to you, and he wasn't ho ho hoing <laughs> when he heard that. Well, we're not going to melt off the snow, Santa. <laughs> <you know? laughs> well, there are still some last-minute moves you can make now to save on your 1987 tax bill. Our money pro Steve Crowley says being a little more generous now could really pay off later. As we get ready to ring out 1987 and ring in the new tax filing season, there are more reasons than ever to dig a little deeper, give a little more. The Salvation Army raises over $100 million during the holiday season alone. Giving more this year is smart. The tax rates are higher in 87, so the money we give today is worth more in tax savings than next year. Plus, with tax reform, our charitable donations are deductible only when we itemize. Next year, we'll need more deductions to itemize. Standard deductions are going up. So, giving to charity before New Year's is smart. Example, if you're single and earning $27,000 or married earning $45,000 between you, your top tax rate is 35%. Next year, that falls to 28%. So, this year's $100 donation cuts $35 off your tax bill, only about $28 next year. If you've pledged a certain amount of money to your church or synagogue, consider paying some of next year's portion now. If you're moving or cleaning up the house for the holidays, donate property like old clothes and furniture to charity before the year ends. Take the tax deduction when you file. And then there are gifts of stock or property. And if you're giving stock or even real estate that's increased in value, it's often better to give it outright rather than to sell it and give the cash. You can avoid the tax on the gain and get a charitable deduction for the fair market value. Check with your tax accountant to see if this strategy works for you. Then, are you giving investments to charity that have dropped in value? Consider selling them, then giving the cash proceeds. You establish a capital loss to offset other capital gains up to $3,000 a year. Plus, you can carry losses over to future years. Giving always makes us feel good. Cutting our income taxes makes us feel smart, too. I'm Steve Crowley, 5 TV News. Thank you, Steve. And coming up on sports, Iowa coach Tom Davis is taking this weekend's big game right in stride. Yeah, but he's not the only Iowa coach that has a big game on his mind. No, we're going to talk a little football today, too, George, because Hayden Fry talked about Iowa's Holiday Bowl game coming up. And that story and more next on sports. <laughs> You can give a kid a bowl of jello gelatin with a slice of banana suspended in the middle, defying all of the laws of physics, and ask the kid, kid, how did mom get a slice of banana into the jello gelatin? There's no holes in the jello gelatin. Now, how did she get it in there? And the kid, holding the spoon at the ready, will look at you and say, I don't care. Jello gelatin. You can't be a kid without it. big tomato. <laughs> I've got a sore nose. It's just the rubbing and the dripping and the sneezing and the wiping and the rubbing and the dripping and the sneezing and the wiping. Uh. 
Introducing first aid for your nose when it's sore from too much glowing. New Pops Plus. Feels like there may be something in there. There's lotion. I feel it on my fingers. No. A lotion. Oh, yeah, I could hold this right here all day. I want to know how they got it on here. It's the first tissue with moisturizing lotion. New Puffs Plus. Well, it saved my nose. Puffs Plus is much less irritating than my tissue. I've never had an experience where you blow your nose and it feels so good. New Puffs Plus. First aid for your sore nose. I got my old nose back. I'm happy. There's a big basketball game coming up on Saturday, but today in Iowa City... Football was on everyone's mind. It certainly was, especially for Hayden Fry, George, because Iowa football coach Hayden Fry opened his practice facility to the media today in Iowa City. Iowa is preparing for their Holiday Bowl meeting with the Wyoming Cowboys, which comes up on December 30th. Now, the Hawkeyes will leave for San Diego the day after Christmas, December 26th. Today, Five TV's Curtis Menifee was in Iowa City and visited with Hayden Fry and some of the Iowa players. Today in Iowa City, I had a chance to talk about Iowa's upcoming bowl game with Coach Hayden Fry and some of the Iowa players. I, I think the two teams are very, very similar, uh, not only in their uh, offensive and defensive uh, philosophies, execution, personnel, but uh, even the adversity suffered uh, early in the season. They just suffered it a little earlier than we did, and they got their winning streak going sooner than we did. The closest team that I could compare Wyoming to would be the University of Iowa. Very, very similar formation-wise, personnel, uh, same style of attack. I really expect probably them doing a variety of different things, and we're just going to have to be ready for everything. Maybe put some pressure on you or drop everybody off. We're just going to have to be ready for it all. You know, they just do a great job with the things they do, and defensively they're very sound, and they have a lot of great you know, players that like to... Uh, play the football game and get after, you know, the opposing team, so we're going to have our hands full. Reporting from Iowa City, Curtis Menifee, 5 TV Sports. Now, while on the subject of football, Syracuse quarterback Don McPherson may have come in second in the Heisman Trophy balloting, but today he walked away with the first prize from the Philadelphia Maxwell Club. Today, he received the Maxwell Award. It's given annually to the best player in college football. And this Saturday's big Iowa and Iowa State game is just a little more than 48 hours away. And although everyone's talking about the big game, Iowa coach Tom Davis is trying to keep a low-key approach to this annual interstate rivalry. You know, my philosophy is a little different maybe than other coaches. I, Iowa State's going to be a great game, but I don't worry about Iowa State going into that game this week. I mean, it's we'll worry about it and do a scouting report, but it's not some, an obsession that just gets in your mind we've got to beat Iowa State we want to improve our team we want to be a better ball club let's what can we do to improve and so we almost worry about that most they're always um, pretty much physical they're always very exciting I know and there's all, always a lot of big plays and the crowds are just tremendous I've never heard a crowd like Iowa State's crowd before and my first time here was my freshman year and I was totally mesmerized I actually couldn't hear myself think you know, I, you'd rather win the Big Eight, and I'm sure Tom would rather win the Big Ten. But it's a big game. It's a it's a game that people in Iowa are interested in, and they want to see. And uh, that's great. I'm glad it's on TV, and I'm glad you and Gary are doing the game, and I hope you do a good job. <laughs> well, we'll certainly try, Coach. Saturday's game will be televised live here on 5 TV at 7 p.m. Now, usually a telecast of this rivalry is one of the most watched programs in the state. So there is a lot of fan interest in the game. Well, how about the fans here at Southridge? Who do they think will win Saturday night? We asked that question earlier this afternoon. Oh, I've always been an Iowa fan. Well, what do you think is the difference between the teams? I think uh, depth. Iowa has a little more depth. Uh, probably pretty close in the starting five. But, uh, balance there uh, is pretty even, but... I think Iowa can wear them down. Iowa State, for sure. Iowa State, why? Got more speed and <laughs> it's home floor. Never lose at home. Uh, well, I again hope it's Hawks, but I'm kind of impartial and I love them both and I wish them the best of luck, both of them. Oh, well, it's definitely got to be Iowa all the way. They've been they've been looking good all year and. I think they're going to do pretty good. I think Iowa State's going to win because they've got the best players. Oh, definitely Iowa. Why? Because I'm a real strong Iowa fan, and I just believe in them. Iowa. Why? 
because I think they're the better defense. Their offense is better and the defense is better. Well, don't forget, you can see the game coming up Saturday night here on 5, 7 o'clock. And don't forget also, tonight at 10, we'll meet this week's 5 TV High School Athlete of the Week. All right, thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Well, Dallas McGinnis has been keeping an eye on the farm markets today. Here's his report. Corn today across Iowa was mixed from two cents lower to two cents higher. In central Iowa, $1.55 to $1.69. Soybeans across the state were seven to ten cents higher. In central Iowa, $5.40 to $5.57. Barrels and gilts were mostly 50 cents lower, occasionally a dollar lower, generally 40 to 42, a few at plants, top 43. Steers steady in a light test, choice steers from 65.50 to 66 and a quarter. Wall Street got hit with a pretty big loss today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell more than 50 points. An average share of common stock dropped 53 cents in value. And coming up, we'll continue our live on-the-road coverage from Southridge Mall. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Make Christmas magic for you and your family with the very best gifts from Yonkers. Like Krupp's 10-Cup Brewmaster and Fast Touch Coffee Mill. Calphalon is the chef's choice in cookware. And Yonkers has it all. At home or away, Rowenta's Garment Steamer puts out a shower of steam in just 90 seconds. Yonkers at Yonkers, Yonkers, Christmas for you. It's been said that the only constant is change. But since 1971, Mustard's restaurants have consistently served quality food. Mustard starts fresh, prepares fresh. Maybe that's why Mustard's is the people's choice. Voted best barbecue in the taste of Des Moines. Judged best baby back ribs served by a restaurant in America. When you do it right, why change? You've heard about us for 14 years. Now try us at any of our three locations. Mustard's. Listen to this. Perry Furniture Paradise in Perry, Iowa is going out of business. Very soon they will lock their doors forever. And there are huge amounts of high quality name brand sofas, sleepers, recliners, desks, mattresses, waterbeds, dining room and bedroom sets that must be liquidated at less than 50 cents on the dollar. Don't get left out. No matter where you live, drive to Perry Furniture Paradise right off Oscar Meyer Road in Perry, Iowa. Open seven days a week, 90 days, same as cash. If you've ever wanted quality furniture at bargain basement prices, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. The daughters of Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and Medgar Evers. Their lives were constantly threatened, their homes firebombed, and their fathers all died tragic deaths by assassination. They'll tell us how they feel now about their father's dreams and struggles. The daughters of slain civil rights leaders on the next Donahue. Bill Donahue, Friday morning at 9 on 5 TV. You're watching 5 TV's Iowa News Today. Well, as many of you know, for the past three weeks, we have been collecting toys for the Toys right. for Tots program. Well, even though we're out here at South Ridge Mall today, we didn't stop our collections. In fact, the Marine Corps Reserve was so nice, they brought some boxes out for us. Now, with us now is Sergeant William Hildebrand with the Marine Corps Reserve. And how are things going with collections so far? Collections so far, Betty, are outstanding. Uh, we've checked past records and everything, and right now we've surpassed all uh, records in the previous years with 22,478 toys we've collected and distributed to the charitable organizations so far. And you still have a lot of toys still to collect. I know we haven't even given you ours yet, and we have a couple of thousand. Uh, yes, we do. We haven't even picked up our collection points or anything. Uh, they still all the fire departments and all our original collection points that we have to pick up which will start next week uh, with your station. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Thank Sergeant you. William Hildebrand. This is a lot of collections here from That's right. Well, coming up tonight at 10, our segment 5 Made in Iowa report takes you to Diamond, Diamond Scientific, a real gem in Iowa's high-tech industries. And Tim Dale is going to introduce us to another one of our weather watchers, so we'll want to watch for that at 10 o'clock. And we'll show you how one local company is helping take you home for the holidays. Don? Okay, well, I'll tell you what, if you're going home for the holidays, watch out tomorrow morning. During the evening, no problems. Increasing cloudiness, 22. Overnight, we're going to see some freezing rain or drizzle developing. 22 for the low. A little bit slippery tomorrow morning, but during the afternoon, the temperature should warm up. Precipitation should end, so no problems then. Okay, thanks a lot, Joe. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining us live on the road at Southridge Mall. We'll be back in the studios tonight <laughs> at 10, so have a great evening.
ABC. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight with a man who has finally felt the political wind on the hairs at the back of his neck. After being publicly skeptical for almost two weeks about the arms control agreement, which Mr. Reagan and Mr. Gorbachev signed, the Republican leader in the Senate, Robert Dole, now likes what he sees. A majority of the public has liked the idea since the Soviet American summit, and Senator Dole is running for president. In Washington tonight, ABC Sheila Cast. It looked like the next best thing to a campaign endorsement for Bob Dole. I welcome the support of the Senate Republican leader and count on his efforts to help ensure Senate ratification. The president tried to focus on what he sees as the INF Treaty's tough verification rules, but the questions were all political. Mr. Reagan's unusual appearance at Dole's side sparked complaints by supporters of Vice President Bush, who until today held claim to the position of the only Republican presidential candidate supporting the treaty. I am, Bush. have always been neutral with regard to the political race. I'll answer that when we get that in the clear. He's here as a leader for our side in the Senate. On the campaign trail in New Hampshire, Bush took the high road. He said he's glad Dole's now on board. Bush can afford to be great.